I'm gonna show you guys how I would, I would prefer doing it. You're gonna take the cap, the cable, thread it through here, like so. This piece is going to replace this guy here. You're gonna take your stage six choke. Now you take this guy, thread it down over. This is gonna kinda hold everything inside, of course. Honda bond here, and you're gonna bolt it right to the motor. So you wanna make sure that slide's coming all the way up and snapping down nicely. And what's really nice about this carb, other than the massive gains, which I'm sure Pat will post a picture of. <laughs> Our products can hold one Pat and one Paul. Next thing we'll go over, we kind of touch base on the transmission, is the carburetor. This is the stock carburetor on this bike. You're gonna take these eight millimeters off. You will need to learn how to do this. It is not terribly difficult. In here, you've got your pilot jet. From your pilot jet or your slow jet into your main jet. Is that needle is gonna come in and out, in and out. Is you're gonna pull this little pin out here. But yeah, they're, they're good motors. Honda reliability, take care of them, make sure you change the oil. Okay, the first part of putting this carb kit together, I'm gonna show you guys how I would, I would prefer doing it. You're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, you're gonna need a flat blade, and you're gonna need a 14 millimeter open end wrench. Pretty simple. I'm gonna start with just eliminating the, the super easy stuff. First thing you're gonna do is pop open this guy here. You're gonna take out your two caps just because you don't want to forget these and you can just find a home for them. So these caps would be used for oil injection or your uh, vacuum for your fuel petcock. But for now, we're just going to pop them on here, eliminate some of these parts. Next step, you're going to take your throttle cable and you can do this in any orientation you want. I'm just doing it the way I want to do it because I want to do it this way. Now what you're going to do, you're going to take your Phillips. You're going to Gently remove these screws here. Hold your hand over the cap. That way it doesn't fling, off, fling out. You don't lose your spring. It doesn't have a whole lot of pressure, but still it's something that can fly across the room and then wasting time looking for a spring. And emailing us asking where to buy a spring. So you're gonna pull this out. Okay, you're gonna have your rubber boot here, your slide and your little plastic retainer. Flip this upside down. Pull that slide out, set the carb aside. Now what you're gonna have here is this is your needle with your C-clip. I wouldn't mess with that at this point. Just let that drop down like so. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this guy here, this throttle cable, take this little rubber boot off the cap, slide this rubber boot up the carb. You're gonna take the cap, the cable, thread it through here like so. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. Okay, so once you have that guy up there, typically just take this boot, slide it down and over like so. That boot's gonna keep this cable from coming out. Take all your slack, take your spring over your cable, place it down in the groove right down here. You're gonna take this cap out and everybody does, everybody does this a little bit different. I hold it down like this with my thumb, take this cap, set it down over the spring and this is what you get. The cable does not go through the center of this cap, it goes through the side. Take this and what you're gonna do, you're gonna put it in this hole here in the center of the slide. And you're gonna see it pop through the bottom. So I'll give you guys kind of a, a view here. So you push it through like so. See how that fits through there? Then you're gonna slide it down. It's gonna lock right in that position. So as you see, it comes through the top, down into position. Take this, drop it down. That little clip, that plastic piece seats itself down in the slide. Once you have this slide into position, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to put the slide in the carburetor. The side that has a little partial groove in it is gonna go on this side of the carburetor where your air idle screw is. If you look down here, there's a tiny little pin right there metal pin. That pin aligns the slide here in this groove. So you want to make sure you take it, it'll drop all the way down. If you have it in wrong, it's going to do that. 
okay? If you turn it around 180 degrees, it, you, can, you can seriously damage this slide if you try to force it down, okay? You're gonna take it, and it's gonna drop right in a position as you roll it around, right there. Push this down. Now you can hold it with one hand, drop your two screws into position, screw them in. This carb install may seem a little daunting, um, but it is really, really easy. As you see, minimal tools here. You're gonna spend more time taking the factory carburetor off and the factory airbox off than you are putting this together. This is very simple stuff. Now, once you have it together, you wanna to pull on this cable just to verify that the slide opens all the way. Okay, snaps down nice. You want to hear that snap down. So if it doesn't go all the way up, it doesn't come all the way down like this. You've got a problem in here. Take it back apart, review the video again, and uh, repeat the process again. Um, you'll find, just double check as you go along. So your throttle cable's done. Now that's out of the way. Next thing I'm gonna show you guys, takes a little bit more time, is gonna be taking this knob off. And again, you don't have to, you don't have to use this kit if you don't want. You can, you can just use the knob if you don't want to deal, don't want to deal with it. But if you do install this kit, take your 14. You're gonna unth unthread this puppy here. Pull that guy out like so. This piece is going to replace this guy here. We're gonna open it with the wrong tool. Get all the pieces out here on the table. Don't lose these parts, guys, okay? Don't lose them. You're gonna take your stage six choke. We may also do a different choke um, than what you see here. They're gonna function exactly the same. So if in the future, you're watching this video and you don't have the stage six choke, the theory is gonna be the same behind the choke cables. So same, just like we did with the throttle cable, slide this guy over and then you're gonna have a spring like so. Place right in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this, move it up to take a little bit of slack out of there. And then what's gonna go on next is going to be your little, little dude here. So once you get the cable in, it's gonna sit like this. You're gonna wanna pull the slack out on this end. I'll show you guys how to do that in a minute. Um, but for now, take this little gasket, slide it over here like so, and then you're going to drop this guy. It's a little bit wonky at first, but you're gonna drop this guy down on the carb body. And you're gonna spin that on by hand. So that's your choke, guys, see? So choke on, choke off. So throw this on by hand, get your wrench in here. Okay, nice and tight. You're almost done with your choke, not quite yet. Now what you wanna do, is you want to unthread this cap. Okay, you're gonna take this off, slides right out. Easy stuff here. Then what you wanna do, you need to take some of the slack out of the screw here, okay? This part is kind of a little bit of a pain, um, but in theory, it, it, it's not too bad. It's just a little bit, a little bit of a pain at, at first to get the adjustment right. First thing I like to do is I like to bottom this out here in the carburetor, see how the cable can, you wanna sit it just like that. And this is gonna be the choke off in the choke off position, which is gonna be like so. But for now, what I'm gonna do, take this Phillips, I'm gonna undo this screw here. Sorry guys, you do need one more tool. I'll show you guys in a minute. But you're gonna take this here. You're gonna pull this puppy right out of here. Again, like I said, not. Not a super fun one. I'm not a fan of this part. Okay, so you're gonna pull that, you're gonna pull that cable out of there, all right? Now what you need to do, put this in the choke position, like so. You're gonna pull, take some pliers, which I'll go get in a minute. You're gonna pull this tight. You're gonna pull it tight, which is gonna pull the choke wide open and then you're gonna cut that cable and you're gonna drop it back in. This is kind of the hardest part of this whole process, really. It's not super difficult, but it, it just um, is dealing with these tiny little pieces that is not super enjoyable. I'll slide that guy all the way down. Let me go get some pliers and snips and then I can finish this part up. Now what I'm gonna do is, again, make sure that's bottomed out. The cable's sitting flush in that copper piece. You're gonna take your pliers. You're gonna pull this all the way up. 
okay? You've gotta make a mark there with the Sharpie. Um, you can always make this a little bit longer because the cable can go up inside of this, this moving piece. So what I'm gonna do is I know I'm gonna hold my finger right where I need to make a cut. I'm gonna come back. Make that cut. Okay. So now you can kind of make your final adjustments as well. I'm gonna drop this guy down in the groove. I'm gonna pull it back so the so the the cable drops down inside that piece. Push it into position. I'm gonna let this go. Drop it down like that. Looks like I need to take out a little bit more. As you can see, if you try to put this whole thing together, it pushes out of this end. If I push this in, I've got some slack down here. So that tells me I need to take a little bit more cable off this. We're gonna go ahead and pull this guy back out. And again, you make your small cuts and you can always cut more, right? If you cut too much off, you, you can't go back. Pull this puppy back out. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and trim about three eighths of an inch off there. All right, try it again. So we're gonna take this little screw here, drop it down like so. We're gonna pull it back, let that cable drop down inside that slide. Make sure that's bottomed out, that's bottomed out. I'm gonna roll this down. Okay, a little bit more, you're getting there. But I would rather, um, I would rather have the cable be too long and take my time than cut the cable too short. Pull it back out again. Flip this knob down like so. Feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna start by, that's bottomed out there. This is bottomed out here. I'm gonna snug this up a little bit. See how it feels. Perfect. So the choke is all the way up. See, it doesn't come out anymore. So that is perfect. Also, you do have some adjustment here if you need, need, but this is this is perfect. Um, so that, that means the choke is, the, the slide, the plunger is going all the way down on the carburetor. When I pull this up, like so, and it stays up, that means the cable's pulled up to the top, pulled that plunger out of the carb, giving it more fuel for choke. So yeah, there you have it. Now you take this guy, thread it down over. This is gonna kinda hold everything inside, of course. And that's it for this guy. Uh, very simple, easy stuff. You can clamp this, like I said, to your transmission. Some guys do that. Make sure this thing is tight and snug. Um, some guys also will will take this, this nut here, drill a hole, and they'll kinda bolt the whole thing together. So it just depends on how you wanna run it. I typically, like I said, take this and go right to a transmission bolt. Make sure this is slid all the way down like so. And then, you know, this will sit on the bike like this. You can take this guy and go right to your, right to a CVT bolt. And again, if you have any slack, see I have a little bit of slack here. You can just turn this guy out. This looks like a six millimeter, I think. You can turn that guy out to kind of eat up some of the slack and then you take this nut and you tighten that nut down like so and it's nice and strong there. So always good to have a little bit of slack because if it's, if it's totally tied 100%, um, then that you risk that plunger so you have a little bit of slack there. You risk that plunger being pulled out a little bit more and your choke being on, which means you're gonna be a little bit rich down low. So that's how the choke, that's the most complicated part, guys. You've got the choke, uh, the choke cable set up and the throttle cable set up. Next, we'll show you guys uh, what jets to start with and then how to put the rest of the parts together. Next thing we're gonna go over jetting. You've got your pilot jet kit here that's provided for now, just for what you're doing. I would just run it with the stock pilot, the pilot that's in it to kind of get a feel for how it runs. And then I'm gonna have you guys put a 94 main jet and I'll show you how to do that. The jetting is gonna be based on your altitude, humidity, air density, all that good stuff. So it's not really gonna be an exact number, but I can get you guys close and show you how to change your jets. And then from there, you're gonna kinda of have to spread your wings and, and fly on your own. Add more fuel, take away fuel. You've got a C-clip um, adjustment for your needle as well but I, I, I can get you guys pretty close and it's always good to start large 
uh, if you live in an area where you think, or you've heard friends say, oh yeah, I run, you know, it needs to be really rich or this or that, typically sea level, sea level, you typically need to be larger on your jets, high altitude, you need to be smaller. That is the rule of thumb. However, some areas like Tennessee and Alabama, we need a ton of fuel and we're nowhere near sea level. So there's some areas that are just kind of throw things out of whack. Um, you've got a little plastic cap here. This just kind of keeps uh, fuel in the area around the main jet. So pop, pop that guy off. You're gonna take this main jet, pull it out. So you've got a hundred in here. You can start with a hundred. It's gonna be a little bit big though. So you pull the hundred out. And you're gonna take your 94. You're gonna take your, your 94 and you're gonna put it in this carburetor. So if you roll it around, you can see what it says on the side. Hand throw the 94 in here. I use one of these little, uh, like a bit driver works really well for doing jets. So snug that guy up, don't go crazy. Sometimes this little emulsion tube will come out. If it does, no big deal, just thread it back in. Next, uh, I, like I said, stick with your stock pilot. So I'm not gonna take this pilot jet out, but if you need to fine tune your uh, cruising and like your idle and whatnot, you just unthread this pilot like so and just go up or down in size, very simple. But I would start, just leave it in there right now and just start with your main jet. There's no other adjustments in this carburetor that you need to be concerned with. Uh, you don't need to adjust your flow. You don't need to do any of that with this carburetor, just the main jet. And again, you can start with 100 if you want. Um, if you live in an area uh, where you typically need more fuel or sea level, you, you, you're, you can start with 100. You're not gonna hurt anything. However, most of these bikes are gonna land between 90 and 100, depending on, like I said, um, you know, if you have an exhaust, if you have a cam, all that stuff, you're gonna need more fuel. Um, if you're doing more like wide open top speed, like on the highway, you're gonna want more fuel. If it's really cold, you're gonna want more fuel because cold means cold means that the air is more dense. So you're gonna get more power. So that wraps up the jets, guys. Um, straightforward. Again, I wouldn't really fiddle with the pilot right now. I would just mess with the main. Um, and again, you don't even have to, but that's just our suggestion on kind of where to start would be like a 94-ish, somewhere in there. So the mains are done. Don't have to mess with that anymore. This is your old choke knob. Don't, you know, save this. This will work on PWK, Key and OKO, stage six, Polini style carburetors. It will not work on Delordo. So that'll work on a lot of different bikes. So keep that puppy. They're about 18 bucks from Polini. They're not cheap. Next step, you're gonna take this guy here. This is your boot for your intake adapter. You're gonna loosen these clamps up completely. And it just made more sense for us to sell you this kit with this adapter, just because we have like 300 of them here. Uh, you're gonna take this little boot, this aluminum adapter, you're gonna pry it out of there. It's real tight. This adapter can also be used on some of your Honda Arrows and whatnot, so keep it. You wanna sell it, it's, it's, uh, it'll, it'll come in handy. Don't throw that away. However, you will not use it on this bike. Next step is to put on this boot. Now, depending on what side of the bike you're working on, this is gonna be your CVT side. I typically like to have the hose clamps facing the CVT side, personally, because that's where I end up doing most of my work. You're not working above an exhaust, a little bit more accessible. So keep that in mind when you put your hose clamps on. You're gonna just shove this guy on like so. We have our clamps made really tight. Oh, not our clamps, I'm sorry, but the, the rubber boots made really tight. That way they're not popping off. We have seen carburetors and whatnot where the actual boots just pop off all the time. So once you get that boot snugged up and solid, you're gonna take our, um, you're gonna take our billet adapter. You're gonna slide it in here. Um, make sure that your, the threaded, the, the screw section is up here in the bottom because if it's on the side, the bolts coming through the intake manifold are gonna contact those screws. So keep that in mind. This guy's pretty tight as well, but nothing too terrible. It's a really, really nice, nice uh, snug seal. So once you get that dude on there, I typically just snug this up a little bit because you're gonna wanna get this carb on. You're gonna wanna rotate it a little bit to get the orientation just right. Who, who, who goes there? Oh, this looks like a scam. Now is a good time to kind of tidy up all these cables. You've got your adapter in. Um, just figured it would be better to do this at a bench or table or workstation rather than doing it around the bike where you're gonna lose parts and uh, risk, risk, you know, damaging stuff and whatnot. This is gonna come with the adapter, okay? Keep that with this adapter here and then keep it in this box. That way you guys can use it for something else. They will not be used on the Navi. Um, so. 
set that aside, keep it, it's still good stuff. Next, the air filter. I'll kind of show you guys a few different options. Um, you've got your 30 degree, you've got a 90, and your filter itself comes pre-installed with a straight. Just for now, I'm just gonna put on the straight because it's already together, but you guys can choose which one you want, which is really nice. Also, if you end up getting another S23 filter, a stage six filter, all, our, all of our filters come with these, so you can kind of choose which one you want. But for now, I'm just gonna start with the straight, straight style. So again, face the hose clamp the same way. You can do this later too. I just uh, figured I would just do this all right now. Get that puppy on snug, and then you can turn this however you want. Um, a little bit crooked there, but. As far as any carb adjustments, the idle, air idle speed, all that stuff at this point, don't mess with any of that. This is gonna be your idle speed. This is gonna raise a slide up. Don't mess with that right now. If you start it up and it's idling really low, go ahead and turn this clockwise. Okay, that's gonna raise your idle. This is your idle speed, or I'm sorry, this is your air idle adjustment. If you turn this in, you're gonna take air away, therefore you're gonna make it richer. Okay, so you're gonna add more fuel at idle and low speed. If you turn it out, you're gonna add more air raising the idle. So these two things are gonna be little tiny tweaks that you learn to ride around on. Take a screwdriver your first ride and adjust these till it idles smooth, idles quiet, the idle comes down, doesn't hang. Um, we can kind of talk about that more, but for right now, you don't need to mess with those. Right now, this is everything you need to install this on your Navi. Okay, so for simplicity, I've already removed the air box from this bike and the motor's out. You guys get a better idea of what's going on. On this bike, the way I would attempt this project is I would probably take off the shock, drop the motor down a little bit to give you some more room. You're gonna take off the bolts to get that air box off and there's gonna be a clamp up here. Your choke cable, you're gonna remove as well. Uh, again, really, really simple stuff. Over here on this side, what we ended up doing is we actually ended up trimming this back a little bit because it is, if you're doing the work in the bike, it is very difficult to get to this spot. Um, so we trimmed this out a little bit while it was in the bike with the die grinder to access that bolt a little bit easier. Or the clip, you just go ahead and remove it right here. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your wrench, get in here, who's calling me? I get called all day, nonstop. On the Navi carburetor, once you remove the choke cable and you've taken the fuel line off the bike, now what you need to do is take your wrench or ratchet or whatever you're using, um, and you're gonna wanna take these bolts off of here. They're gonna be an eight millimeter. It's a little bit hard to get a ratchet in here just with um, how close they are to, the, to those nuts on the top of the manifold. One bolt out, set it up here. Like I said, this one on this side is not really a fun one. <clears throat> so one of the benefits of the Polini carburetor, if you're gonna be tuning and tweaking and dialing this bike in, is you don't have to undo this every time because it does get really old. You wanna make a change, make a, a you know, change something, clean a carb or whatever. It's just an extra step. So you're gonna, you're gonna pull your throttle cable out of your bike completely. And this entire unit is going to go in a box, probably, I don't know where it's gonna go. Um, but for now, I'm gonna sit on the, the bench over here. All that's gonna go away. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this carburetor, a manifold setup. What I would prefer personally, and this is gonna be up to you, is I would Honda bond around here and I would get rid of this gasket and this spacer personally. Now, that's up to you. Um, if you wanna use this gasket and spacer, you do need to widen this a little bit because our manifold is actually a little bit larger than what this is, just to be able to have a little bit more performance. Plus, if you wanna if you want to clearance this out, you can take the manifold off and you can port this out. If you wanted, would rather go big than, than be too small. If you're gonna keep this, it's best to trim this out and grind it out a little bit to get it to fit. That being said, you can take this, set it over here with your carburetor, Say, I'm not going to use that junk anymore. Take your Honda Bond, and you're going to want a Honda Bond, Honda Bond here, and you're going to bolt it right to the motor. Very simple. Simple stuff, guys. So for now, just for this video's purpose, I'm just going to thread these bolts in. I'm not going to Honda Bond this in because 
we already have a whole carb setup that we're using for this bike right now and i don't really want to honda bond this guy in so like i said it does really help to trim that plastic on the other side which i should have done a little bit more because it is really annoying on that bolt on the other side it's just it's just frustrating with that plastic there. You want a Honda Bond in there, um, you could make a gasket if you want, but Honda Bond, Yama Bond is gonna be your best bet for best sealing. The stock gasket and whatnot, you can use as well if you grind it out. However, it's naturally gonna be a little bit more prone to leaking than just Honda Bond on these two metal surfaces. So, you go ahead and snug one side up. Okay, so I'm not gonna tighten the other side up right now because that's going to go away um i'm just doing this to show you guys how it's installed we have a whole nother setup here <clears throat> excuse me we have a whole nother setup here that we're using right now so i don't really want to dirty another another carb setup now what you want to do is take your choke cable and what i typically like doing <clears throat> is you find something you could you could drill a hole you can mount it right here in this arm. You can mount it down right there, poke a little hole in there if you want to. Um, you can put it on a CVT bolt if you want. You can put it on this side of the bike if you want. You can kind of put it wherever you want. You can drill this bracket out uh, if you want. Personally, I would take this, I'd run it behind the shock and I would, I'd probably go right there. I'd turn that out so you can just pull it down and get your choke on. Also, you can just leave your stock, um, you can just leave the stock uh, pull choke on there as well. Totally up to you. But that's it guys, very simple, very straightforward. You're gonna wanna hook your gas line up on this side. That's where your gas line is gonna go right there. Your throttle cable, it's gonna go back in the throttle housing. Um, that part of it, uh, I, I don't, our bike is, here's our bike. Here's your throttle housing and it's all torn apart. You've just got a couple screws, take it apart. It's very straightforward. Once you pull it apart, it'll make sense. Um, but you're gonna pull the old cable out and you're gonna put the new cable in. Once you get it all adjusted, um, you want to make sure that your slide is opening up all the way. So you're going to want to open this, take it off. And then you're going to look down here. And when you pull the throttle, it's all looped around here. When you twist the throttle on your bars, you want to make sure that slide's coming all the way up. So um, you always want to verify that. So let's see here, go like that. So you want to make sure that slide's coming all the way up and snapping down nicely. That's the carbon stall. I would say all in all, when you've got these parts in front of you, the entire job I would say is probably about, probably about an hour. Um, and what's really nice about this carb, other than the massive gains, which I'm sure Pat will post a picture of here. Um, other than the massive gains, it also creates more power along the whole entire curve, right? So it's not, it's not just like two, you know, stock versus the Polini go up like this and then the stock goes down. You gain all the way at the bottom, all the way up, and the, and the stock one just kind of falls off and the Polini just keeps going and going and going as the stock one goes down in the power curve. So you don't just gain like that peak horsepower in one spot, you gain it all the way across, down low, up top, all the way around. And what's cool is if you guys want to change a jet, you literally just unscrew this and the whole carb comes right off. You're not going to be fiddling with those pain in the butt eight millimeters on that bracket. So yeah, two wheel horsepower ish gain somewhere in there. Paddle, correct me if I'm wrong. That's kind of what I'm, I'm recalling. Super easy job. Make sure you shut your fuel pet cock off before you pull the old gas line off the bike. And then when you put the new gas line on, make sure you turn that fuel pet cock on. Um, and again, if you want to raise your idle a little bit, you've got this screw here in turns idle up, down, takes it down. And then this is gonna be your, your air idle adjustment, um, or your air, your air fuel adjustment down at idle and low speed. Hope that helps you guys, hope that wraps it up for you. Uh, we, I do foresee selling a massive amount of these the second we uh, list more available. We listed up two, we had two prototypes in and they sold immediately. There is currently no other kit on the market that I am aware of that offers this type of gain that's bolt on and you're dealing with all of S23 brand products, which are really nice, Polini brand products, and then the adapter, which is actually made about uh, 10 miles from the shop. So yeah, there you have it guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm not gonna get into the tuning portion of it because you're gonna have to watch some other videos to show you how to read plugs, you know, the, the, the way it's gonna act if it's too rich and too lean. At the end of the day, you're gonna have to jet it for your application. And that being said, 
I foresee no more than maybe four jet changes. If it takes you 10 minutes to change a jet, you've got an hour into tuning. So it's really not that bad. There you have it guys, carb kit, rocks, buy it. Two wheel horsepower gains and much, much, much easier to work on than that factory carburetor.